Hey guys, Kaylee Jane here with Cedar Winds Farm. And um, the past couple weeks, I've been getting all my stuff together to replenish my kidding kit. Uh, looking forward to kids starting in about two months um, in April. And so I thought it would be a great time um, to just kind of go over what's in my kidding kit and why it's in there. So I just want to quickly show you what's in my kidding kit and how it's packed. And then I'm going to unpack it and show you all the individual things in here and why I have them in here. Um, but anyway, this is my, my kidding box. And as you can see, <clears throat> it's in a crate. So I can just pick it up and carry it around to the stall or wherever I need to go. Um, and that makes it really convenient to carry around. So first of all, I'm going to go over the things that I use every single kidding. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to go over some of the things that I've had to use occasionally. They're just kind of good to keep on hand. And some things that I've kept on hand, never had to use, and hope that I never do have to use. So towels, obviously, kidding is pretty wet and gooey, and you're going to want some towels. So um, <clears throat> these are just old bath towels, nothing fancy here. If you typically use heavily perfumed laundry detergent or fabric softener, maybe don't use it when you're washing up your kidding towels um, just because you want your goats to smell normal um, and not like fake perfume. The next thing that I always use um, is I like to dip kids' navels in iodine. Um, it just helps them dry up more quickly um, and it helps get rid of any bacteria or anything that might be stuck to their umbilical cord uh, that could get into their body and cause joint ill. Not everybody dips navels. So this is actually a jelly jar. It's one of those little sample size jelly jars and I like it because it has a lid. Uh, so, you know, you can keep the lid on it, keeps it nice and clean. Um, you could just put a little bit of iodine in and then you just turn it over the kid's navel and slosh it around a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and that does a pretty good job dipping um, iodine. You can just get this from the drugstore. Um, I actually bought a great big bottle of iodine that I'm going to keep out in the barn because I use it for all kinds of different stuff. So super easy to find that. Um, another idea for iodine, this is what I did my first kidding season, you can put it in a spray bottle and just spray the kid's navel. Um, what I found out about that though and why I quit doing it is during temperature changes, the um, iodine will go up the straw of your spray bottle and will come out uh, through your little sprayer hole right there. Um, <clears throat> and that will make a mess everywhere in your whole kidding kit. So um, if you're going to use uh, iodine in a spray bottle for your kidding kit, make sure that you disconnect the straw from the sprayer um, so that you can't, you don't end up with iodine going everywhere. The only other thing that I consistently use every single kidding season is molasses. And I use molasses for all kinds of stuff. It's great food, high in iron, it's good stuff. Um, but I like to give my does a little drink of warm molasses water when they finish kidding. Just gives them an energy boost and it's kind of a little reward for doing a great job pushing out those babies. The other thing is during kidding season, um, I pretty much always keep my nails cut short anyway, but I just make sure that they're always short because if I do need to go in and assist, um, it makes it easier to get my hands and nails clean before I go in and put my hand inside the dough. Um, so I'm less likely to cause infection. And obviously too, if you have longer nails, you run the risk of scratching up the kid or scratching up the inside of your dough and just making the whole process more uncomfortable for them than it already is. So just make sure you always keep your nails nice and short uh, prior to kidding season. So now I'm gonna move on to some things that I have had to use occasionally, but don't necessarily have to use every single kidding season. So the first thing that I occasionally have to use um, is OB lube. And um, you can use this uh, if you need to get your hand inside of a dough and it's a really tight fit or she's been in labor for a while and she's kind of dried out like a lot of her fluids and her water have already gone out of her um, and you're just having a hard time getting your hand in there smoothly. Or if you need to manually dilate her cervix, she's not dilating properly for some reason. You can use this and that will really help. If you don't have OB lube, you can use like Vaseline, you can use cooking oil, there's all kinds of stuff you can use in a pinch. But this stuff is pretty cheap. The other thing that um, I occasionally will have to use is a bulb syringe. You can just use these to suck out the kid's nose and mouth if they are having a hard time breathing, if they're slow to get going. Uh, if it's a breech presentation and you're worried that they may have inhaled some fluid, um, you can just use this to help get rid of all of that junk 
and get them breathing a little bit easier. Another thing that I use from time to time is a blow dryer. This is just a regular old blow dryer. If it's cold when you're kidding, you need to get your kids dry really quickly or they're going to start having issues keeping their body temperature up where they could even get frostbite. Um, so I like to use a blow dryer if, if it's a cold, wet, damp day. The kids just are taking a while to get completely dry. Or if I have a kid that gets a little bit chilled, I can kind of make a tent out of like a towel and wrap it around them and then use the blow dryer and just blow warm air into the tent. You don't necessarily want to blow directly on the kid because it could get actually too hot for them. Um, but you could just blow kind of into that enclosed airspace around the kid and that will help them get up to temperature and get warm again. If I have a kid that's off to a slow start or a mom who has not figured out how to be a mom yet and is struggling with uh, letting her kids nurse, um, I want them to get colostrum in their belly as fast as they possibly can. Um, and so if it's too much trauma and struggle trying to get them latched on mom, I will milk mom into this bottle um, if she'll let me. If not, I'll have to milk into a bucket and pour into the bottle. And I'll just give the kids a few ounces of colostrum just because I always want to make sure that they've got something in their bellies and they're off to a good start as soon as possible after being born. So this bottle is super handy. I got this one from Caprine Supply and it's got this, um, uh, I think this is a Pritchard nipple. It's an easy nipple to use. It doesn't require them to have to have a good suck reflex to be able to use it. You have to be careful because the milk will just start to come out as soon as you tip the bottle. So you don't want to drown your kids, obviously. Um, but it's just a really easy, easy bottle to use. And um, it's just nice to be able to get them started on colostrum and just have the assurance that they've got something in their belly um, if you're having some issues. The other thing that I use sometimes is oral cal and PK. Uh, mostly my does are fine on calcium um, because I feed alfalfa and stuff. Uh, when they're in their pre-kidding phase. But um, if they're having a hard time getting their placenta passed um, or if their contractions are slow and sluggish and they're just struggling, um, you can give them a few cc's of this um, and that will usually get the, those contractions going pretty quickly. So again, not something I have to use all the time. Ideally, I never will have to use it again because I've gotten better at my nutrition uh, program. Um, I don't know why these bottles always collapse like this, but they do. This is a brand new bottle. It's sealed. It's never been opened and it's flat for whatever reason. Headlamp is really nice. Uh, if you're kidding in the dark and you don't have any light, it's hands-free lighting. So you can be using both your hands for whatever and um, headlamps will save your life if it's super dark. I also have this homemade salve that my mom actually makes for us. We use it for ourselves and all of our animals and everything else. It's good for what ails you. Um, if you have a doe who has a really rough kidding, um, and her vulva area is just really swollen and painful looking, or sometimes they can tear, um, during kidding as well. It's just nice to have something on if she has a really rough kidding and you feel like she just is really, really hurting back there. Another thing that you can use for that is Preparation H, which is a hemorrhoid, um, treatment. It's topical. Or lots of people have all kinds of different things, sprays, whatever that you can use. The other thing that's really good to keep on hand is a thermometer, and this is just a basic medical thing that you should probably have on hand for your goats, whether you're kidding or not. But for kids, it could be really helpful. You can check their temperature um, and make sure that they're at a normal temperature if you do have a chilled kid or something like that. Um, they can't digest milk when they're cold, so it's really important to get them to around 101 to 101.5 um, before you feed them if you have a cold, dead, a cold kid. Um, otherwise, you're just going to create more problems if you try to feed them. Um, they're going to be super lethargic to start with if they're cold. Um, and then if they have milk sitting on their belly that they can't digest, it's not going to be helpful, helpful for them at all. So anyways, thermometer is really good. If you don't have a thermometer, which I can, I recommend that you get one. You can just get one from a drugstore or Walmart or wherever. Just a human thermometer. You take the goat's temperature rectally. But anyway, you can also stick your finger in the kid's mouth. And if their mouth feels cold to the touch, then that's a good sign that they're probably below what the temperature that they should be. The other thing that I like to keep around, I don't necessarily keep it in my kidding kit all the time, but I always have it around, is selenium gel. If you have a kid who can't stand up, they're really weak, they're wobbly, um, you can give them a little dab of selenium gel just in their mouth, like a pea-sized amount. It's not very much at all. Um, and that will help them to start to replenish that deficiency that they've been dealing with. Um, and help them get their strength up. If you're on top of your selenium supplementation, 
during pregnancy, you shouldn't need to be supplementing your kids. But every once in a while stuff happens, right? And your things slip through the cracks and so it's just good to have a backup on hand. Another thing that you can use if you have a weak lethargic kid is injectable B complex. Um, <clears throat> and you could just get this at like your local livestock supply store. Probably your feed store will have it. Um, you can order it online at Jeffers. Uh, really, almost any of this stuff can be ordered online. Amazon, Jeffers, or Valley Vet is where I get almost everything that I own for goats. Vitamin B is just great for kids. It helps get their system up and going. Um, so you can just give them a very small amount. Um, I Some people like to give it orally. I don't because the kids seem to hate the taste of it. So I find it easier just to give them an injection under the skin. Um, I mean, you're talking like a half a mil or less. So it's a tiny, tiny injection. Um, and you could just tint up. Kids have, newborn kids have very loose skin. You just tint up a little pinch of skin, poke the needle in put in the vitamin B and you're done and they don't even notice it most of the time. That brings me to syringes and needles and I keep these things on hand all the time. Um, I have two sizes of syringes that I like. This is a 12 mil, this is a 3 mil. 3 mils are just nice for like if you're giving shots to kids or just really small doses of something. You don't have to be fiddling with this great big syringe. Um, and then my two sizes of needles that I like <clears throat> is a 20 gauge. It's not going to focus. Anyway, this is a 20 gauge needle. This is an 18 gauge needle. Um, the 20 gauges are good for things like vitamin B. It's very thin, it's like watery substance, and it just goes right in. The 18 gauge is good for thicker things like penicillin. It just goes in a lot faster and better through the larger size of needle. So 18, 20 gauge needles, three mil and 12 mil syringes. That's pretty much gonna keep you covered for whatever you might need. The other thing, and this is, an, this is a used bottle. There they go. Um, if you have a weak kid, uh, cod liver oil is another thing you can use to perk your kid up. Just one that seems like they're a little bit off, they're small, they're runty, they're just not doing real well. You can just give them a little bit of cod liver oil. These are gel caps, so you could just squirt some out into their mouth from the gel cap, just poke a little hole in it. Or you can, if you're bottle feeding them, you can just put it in their bottle. Squirt the oil into their bottle. And I feel like these really do make a difference. The other thing, and I don't have it sitting here, but these are just common kitchen ingredients. If you have a kid that's, again, lethargic, maybe one that got cold, doesn't have a good suck reflex, just seems kind of weak and puny, um, you can mix up a, just a pinch of cayenne pepper and a little bit of honey, mix it together and rub it on their gums. And that will bring them back like that. I mean, it's just crazy. It, it works so fast. Again, these are all for weak kids, kids that got cold, you know, things like that. Um, I'm hoping to avoid all those scenarios, but you know, it's good to be prepared for some of those eventualities. Uh, just because sometimes if you can step in with the right stuff and do a little bit of prevention right at the get-go, um, you can avoid a whole host of issues later on. So now I'm gonna get into the stuff that I have never had to use and hope that I never have to use. Um, the first thing that I bought, it sat in my closet for the past however many years I've been doing kids, and I hope that I never have to use it, is this lamb and pig puller. Um, and basically how this guy works <clears throat> is it's got this loop that goes around the kid. You can put it around their neck. Um, I think is usually how it's used if they if they're, have a really bad presentation and maybe they have like their head back and maybe both their front legs back or something and you just need an extra set of hands inside the dough. I hope I never have to use this, but it's something that I have on hand just in case I ever do need it. Um, because I would just hate to lose a dough in kids because I didn't have a tool that was like 20 bucks. Um, <laughs> it just seems like cheap insurance to me. You can also use like Baylor's twine and things like that to create, um, you know, a head snare for, for those sorts of emergency situations. Um, I just like this one because it's, um, it's metal and plastic, so it's just going to be a lot easier to disinfect and keep clean. The other thing that I never had to do, and again, hope I never have to do it, is stomach tube a kid. Um, but I do have stomach tubing stuff here. Um, have this little tube and a big syringe. So you can put the tube into the kid's stomach and then put the milk into the syringe and syringe it into their stomach. 
The last thing I want to talk about um, is heat lamps. Um, I have them on hand. I don't use them for the goats very often. It is nice to have them on hand just in case, again, if you have a really wet, nasty, cold day and you've got kids that are struggling to keep their body temperature up or if you're kidding um, in the wintertime. Um, I would really encourage you to get some ideas of how to set them up safely because you don't want to end up burning your barn down, obviously. Um, so, I mean, I try to plan my kiddings for April and May because I don't want to have to use heat lamps and I don't want to deal with the cold. Um, but I have used them occasionally, so it's just something that might be handy to keep around just in case you ever need it. Another thing that sometimes people keep in their kidding kits, which I don't keep on hand, um, is gloves. Um, I don't use them. I tried to use them. I just felt like I lost a lot of dexterity when I was trying to use gloves. And also I trust um, that my goats are healthy. I'm pretty careful about, you know, not exposing them to potentially sick animals. Um, so, you know, there are things like chlamydia that you can actually get from your goats. You don't want to mess around with that. If in doubt, you know, wear gloves. But, um, because I feel like my goats are really healthy and um, I take a lot of uh, sanitary precautions. If you're gonna get gloves, I highly recommend that you get some that go up to your armpit. Um, there's even some that have a little loop that goes around your head and neck so they're armpit high and the loop holds them in place so they don't slide down. Get those because those little ones that go up to your wrist, those do nothing. If you have to seriously get into a goat and seriously rearrange kids, you're going to be up to your elbow at least, maybe above your elbow. So yeah, just if you're going to get gloves, get the tall ones because those little short ones aren't going to do you any good at all. I believe in keeping things simple as possible. So, you know, I just, I don't have a ton of stuff, a ton of gadgets. Um, and most of what I own that's kidding stuff doesn't even come out to the barn with me at kidding time. Honestly, if you just have some good clean towels, you're probably gonna be just fine in most kidding scenarios. So I hope this video was helpful and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.